Good morning and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube. Daf Nadarim Daf Lamin number 30. A great share for you today, concluding a big part of this parak and moving on to an interesting part of the parak where it talks about the Dharam that you make using a specific Lashon. Who are you including? Who are you excluding? Let's get started. The Chavtam is on the bottom. <coughs> Third to last line. Yosef. Yosef, Rabbi Abin, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi, 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 These two Rabbanim, they sat in front of Rabbi, 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 wasn't paying attention. He was tired. They were saying boring stuff. Yosef, Rabbi, They sat and they said, Labar Pada, according to Labar Pada's opinion, the Amar Pada and Chosos of a Kochos. Right, he says, if you take a net there, that they're Kodosh until they're cut down, right? So if you're Pada to them, so it takes effect, right? That... <clears throat> You redeemed it, so whatever money you redeemed the trees for uh, has Kedusha's Dhamma. We have to use to purchase a carbon. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, the trees remain Kadosh, and if you're put it again, again, it transfers Kedusha to the money. <clears throat> so, according to him, Tifshot, even though we don't hold like Rafa, Tifshot, the boy Rafa Shaya, the top of Lama of Allah, Rafa Shaya says, Hanosin Shtay, Prutos Isha, Amr Labachas is Kashili Ayom, Vachas is Kashili Lachas Agarshik. He wants to insure insurance policy. And if, even if he gets angry and divorces his wife, he'll still remain married to his wife. So he doesn't have much money in his bank account. He gives a pruta, I don't know, a quarter, let's say, 10 cents. And he says, you make to me with this now. And after I divorce you, I mentioned I'm going to divorce you because I'm a contentious person and I'm going to get into fights with you. I'm going to eventually divorce you. So... You'll take the second 10 cents, and after I divorce you, you'll be Kudusha with that. How can I be a Kudushi? I wish I wasn't sure. So, according to Barpoda, it just seemed that the Kudushin should take effect the second time. Remember, we compared yesterday Kudushin to Kudushin's Dhamma, or Kudushin's Akuf, right? Kudushin, specifically, I said, you know, not marriage, not Nisuin or Arison, but Kudushin has the same thing as Hectus. So, therefore, once I redeem the tree, it retains its kedusha. So here also, when I'm Magarish, the woman, right? She sort of, she sort of, um, she loses her kedusha. Right? The kedusha is over. The marriage is over. The kedusha is over. And then it comes back, right, through the second pruta that I'm giving her now. It returns automatically. So it should be good. <clears throat> so while they were saying this is iter behur of Yermia, once they were saying this, right, interesting of Yermia, saying some crazy blasphemy over here. You can't make this comparison. There's a difference when I redeem it. Firstly, I made something hectish. I made my trees hectish until they're cut down, right? And then I redeemed it as opposed to someone else redeeming it. According to our Pada, Rabbi Yochanan said, only if I go ahead and I'm Poda the trees, then there are Kozer and get Kedush, and I have to Poda them again. However, someone else redeems the trees, right? So he's removing the ownership of the trees. When I redeem the trees, basically I'm buying the value for myself. So therefore, they're no longer in the Rishos of the person who made them hectish, and they lose their hectish because the hectish is only tied to the person who has mocked them. And what about a woman? She, when she gets divorced, she goes into her own Rishos, right? She leaves the Rishos of her husband, and she goes into her own Rishos, right? If she's a Bulgarish, she goes into her own Rishos, down her father's Rishos. So therefore, it's similar to someone else bought her, not he bought her. The Gerishin, he is giving her her own Rishos. He's putting her back in her own Rishos. She pulled her herself through the Gerishin. It's Marnami. The Gemara says, it's true. I'm Rabbi Ami. I'm Rabbi Yochanan. 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 i like we previously quoted Rabbi Yochanan. And if somebody else would redeem the trees, doesn't retain its kedusha, so therefore the halacha would be not like Rabbi Yoshai, or Rabbi Yoshai's question we answered the other way. Um, if I'm a Kaddish woman after I'm a Garish, or I give her money now that after the Garish, she gets it again, she's not close to kedusha because she bought back herself, and therefore I have to give her money now again to be a Kaddish or afterwards. Misha says, I know that you're the Ayam. Someone who takes a nether from seafarers, right? There's people that you know, run cruise lines, they're captains on ships. People have, when you buy a yacht, if you didn't know this, if you're planning on buying a yacht, you should know that besides the enormous sum that you have to pay for the yacht, there's an enormous sum to maintain a yacht. 
You have to have a captain. You have to have uh, deckhands, people on deck to constantly take care of the boat for maintenance. Uh, they say uh, you pay, uh, you could pay per month like one tenth of the value of the actual yacht itself, or maybe it was yearly. Anyway, it's an exorbitant amount of money to maintain a yacht. So you have your yacht and you have a crew, and there are yard the yacht. These people are always on the sea. Right? If you took your net there, you say, I'm not going to get benefit from people who go travel on the sea or people who run a cruise, their captains, their deckhands on the boat. So the Asr Mayor, the Ayam, Mutter Yosha Yabasha, he's Mutter to get benefit from people that generally don't go on, don't travel on boats. I never took a cruise, so you can't get benefit. You read Mutter, you got enough from me. Miyosha Yabasha, and nonetheless, we took another from people who. Stay normally on dry land. They don't take cruises a lot. Usher miyar de ayam. You're also usher people that go on cruises because not everyone lives on a boat their whole lives, right? They go also on a basha, so therefore it's included. Shiyar de ayam mechal yoshe basha. People who go on the sea also spend a significant amount of time on dry land. Lo keilu shaholchem miako liyafo elam mimishadarcho lefarish. We'll explain the Gemara. This seifa, this last clause in the Mishnah, is it going on the first part of the Mishnah or the second part of the Mishnah? Anyway, it limits people who are Yordan Hayam, people who are seafarers, only people that, you know, travel uh, an extensive distance in the sea, not people that just go from Akko to Yafa. Akko is the northern part of Israel. Yafa was next to Tel Aviv, right? It's a very short travel by the sea, maybe an hour or two. So that's not considered to be a seafarer. You want to be a seafarer, you have to be someone... Who spends an extensive amount of time? You go on a cruise or something like that. One said that his last clause in the mission is going to Rasha. One said it's going on the Seifa. The one who said that it goes on the Rasha, how would he explain our Mishnah? His mission says you take an ed there from people that are seafarers, they go on cruises a lot. You're allowed to get benefit from people who don't generally go on cruises. Nonetheless, obviously, also are people that spend a significant amount of their time on the sea. Right? It means to live. People that go for a one-day trip or a one-hour trip, take a ferry from Yafo to Akko or Akko to Yafo, that's not considered to be <clears throat> a significant trip. That doesn't make you a seafarer. The Hal and Yosher Yabasha didn't know. So therefore, even if you said, I know them, you're that yam, you wouldn't be usher and the people that take a ferry across the, the Staten Island Sound. El and Misha and the fire, some people that go on a long cruise. Aman the Masnia Seifa, the one who says that the, the last clause in our Mishnah is going on the Seifa of the Mishnah, Masni Hachi, how would he explain it? Another Yosher Yabasha, usher be your day yam. If you took a nether from people that generally stay on dry land, Right, not only are you usher in those people, you're also usher in people that frequently go on the sea. It's coming to include, right? It's more machmir according to this way of learning that Yoshe Abasha. Don't think it means people that generally stay on land, but um, <clears throat> but sometimes um, sometimes they'd go on the sea. They go on a short trip, right? But if you people that Generally, we're on cruise on cruise ships, right? They led the cruises most of the time. They're on sea, so they wouldn't be included in Yarshe Abasha. No, even people that are on a yacht and spend most of their time on a yacht, sometimes, of course, they're going to come back onto land. They're not going to spend the whole entire life on the yacht, so therefore they'll come back onto land, and therefore they're included. If you say Yarde Hayah, you say Yarshe Abasha, and includes any type of Yarde Hayah, even if they spend an extensive time. On the sea, the mission says, "I know the Meroya Chama Asra Af Besumin takes a nether from people Roya Chama." I mean, there's two ways to explain it: you either see the sun, or the sun sees you. They'll explain in the Gemara. So it includes even blind people. Shalom is Kavan Zel Misha Chama Roya Osa. When he said Roya Chama, he didn't mean to say they can see the sun. Blue and blind people can't see the sun. It means to say Roya Chama that the sun sees them. So therefore, blind, blind people, the sun sees them also. Gemara says, "My time." What's the reason? How do you know Roya Chama means the sun seeing them as opposed to them seeing the sun? Look, I'm in a rowing. If he wanted to exclude sumen, blind people, he should have said people who see, right? They say Chama, right? The reason he said Roya Chama is to exclude not sumen, but to exclude fish and fetuses which have never seen the daylight. They usually spend most of their time 
either underwater or in the mother's womb. So therefore, that's what he meant to exclude, not blind people. The mission says, I know they're Mishkori Arosh. He takes a nether, he's not going to benefit from people who have black hair. What if you have blonde hair? Also, Bikarchen Uvali Sable. He's also in bald people who probably once had hair. Bald men, Uvali Sable. So old men who have white hair or gray hair. However, he meant to exclude women and children who are under the age of Bar Mitzvah. When he meant black, black-haired men, black-haired people, he only meant men, not women and children. I'm going to explain this. Where is my time? How do you know that we include even bald people and people with white hair? Look, I'm Bali Sayer. If he wanted to exclude bald people, right, he would have said that they presently have hair. The fact he says Shkori Arosh means that they at one point in their life had black hair. Now they either have white hair or they're bald. Nonetheless, they're included in Shkari Arosh. Mutter Benashim Vakhtanim. The reason he's mutter to get Hana from women and children, Shayni Kron Shkari Arosh Ela Anashim. They're only called Shkari Arosh are men, my time, but the Gemara explains. Anashim, Zin in the Mikhsore Shayah, Zin in the Mikhsore Shayah. Men, sometimes they uncover their hair, hair, and sometimes they don't. We'll explain this morning of Ben Sion. A lot of. Uh, Practical ramifications thrown out by this. A woman covering their head, men covering their heads, wearing yarmulkes, wearing black hats. There's so much in this little couple of lines over here that I have to learn from this over here about practicality, the way Jews dress, women covering their hair, men covering their hair, children covering their head, yarmulkes, hats. Again, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to give you a simple explanation here. Anashim, zim in the mixer, zim in the mixer, men, sometimes they cover their heads, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they go outside, they wear a hat, they wear a beanie. In the snow, <laughs> they wear a black hat if you're Haredi. So they're always sometimes they're wearing a hat. Sometimes you know even people wear a black hat. Sometimes in the living room they'll take it off. Victor Miller, for example, never took off his black hat in his living room. He says you always have to be in fear, even in your living room. But other people, they're more makele. You know, obviously they'll go to Gehenim for this. But what can you do? I mean, you have to be comfortable sometimes. Go to Gehenim, so it's not so bad. You know, take off your black hat in your living room. Um, <clears throat> Uh, women always cover their heads, right? You thought women, you, yeah, even girls when they're when they're one years old, they're covering their head, they're wearing shaitals, you know, by that. Viktanim lo miglu and katanim, right? Non bar mitzvah age boys, they don't wear anything on their heads. They're not even wearing yarmulkes. You thought when they give an upshare and three years old, you give them a yarmulke? No, 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 no. At the bar mitzvah, is when you give them the yarmulke. <laughs> Anyway, the point is that it says Shkari Arosh, people, black hair, right? When are you able to tell what color the hair of the person is? Is when sometimes it's covered, sometimes it's not covered. So you identify the person, he has black hair, right? If their hair is always covered, you don't know what color their hair is, right? And Iktanim, right, their hair is always uncovered. So you don't have to say black hair, you know, just hair, you know. Black hair is telling me you're trying to distinguish what color hair is. It's not always evident. So that's why it it signifies men and not children and women. The mission, I know there are many eludim, mutter benoldim. He takes a neder. We'll see. Eludim means people who are already born. So he's mutter benoldim, people that will that are not born at the present time when he took his neder that will be born in the future. He's mutter benoldim. He takes a neder from people that will be born. Asher men eludim. Included in that is also people that are. Born now and are living now. Remeir Matir Af Yeludim. Remeir Matir is not only the Noldim, but also the Yeludim. The Gemara will say, explain what Remeir Asr is. He, he says, even the Yeludim. He says, Noldim, right? He's mutter. It sounds like Remeir Matir is both the people that will be born and the people that are already born. The Chum Romim, Lonis Kavan Zel, Mishadarchal, Hivale. No, when he says Noldim, right? People that are going to be born. He included not only people that are going to be born, but also people that are already born. Because people in general have children. Dark holy valid, right? No, the means that are going to be born and have the capacity to give birth to children, and human beings have that capacity. The Gemara says that a mayor only by noldim, and only mana asr. According to a mayor, it sounds like if you say in mina noldim, right? Matir afbi afbi eludim, even the eludim, kosher can he's matir the noldim, so who would he be asering? So the Gemara says, Chasurim Mesharaki Gesani, the Mishnah is missing part of the words. I know they're eludim. According to the Chamim, if you take Neder from Yeludim, people that are currently alive, you didn't include people that are not yet alive, not yet born. Men anoldim, Asr be Yeludim. If you take Neder from Noldim, then it Asr be Yeludim. The Chamim said, right, it includes everybody. Remeir Omer, Afa Noder, Men anoldim, Mutter be Yeludim. Even if you take Neder, Men anoldim, 
then you're mutter in the Ludim, right? He doesn't mat your, right? If you take a nether from Nolden, right? Mayor agrees that children that are not yet born are going to be us, or you can't get a nether from them. However, you are mutter in the Ludim, and the people that are currently alive, the and the Ludim, mutter and Nolden. Right, just like the opposite, right? When you take another from people that are currently alive, you're mutter the people that are going to be born. If you take another from people that are going to be born, you're mutter, you're usher in them, but you're mutter in the people that are currently alive. I'm a little popal abaye. Oh, says to Abaye, remember the noldim in the Messiah Mashma. The whole way I'm explaining this is that noldim means that are going to be born in the future, that they're that they're not yet born. Elamata, what do you do with the Pasuk? Shne Banayah and Oldum Lakabar Mizraim. Right? And your two sons, Hashem says to Moshe. That were born to you in Eretz Mitzrayim. Uh, is it to Moshe he says this? Um, sorry, this is in Bereshus. Sorry, Yaakov says this to, to, to Yosef about Ephraim and Asha. I know the Muhammad is Eretz Mitzrayim. How can I do this? Who? Does that mean that they weren't born yet? They were born yet. Elamai. So the Gemara says, what are you going to say? The Yaldu Mashma? You want to say, no, that means. That they already gave birth. El Ma'ata, the Chsiv, Nei Bein Nola, the base David, Yoshiahu Shmo. Hachanami da Hapa. Hashem gives a prophecy, Yoshiahu, it's a big tzaddik, wasn't he born to the house of David? Right? Vadai Menasha, lo bo. Menasha, who was the grandfather of Yoshiahu, at that point was still not born. So certainly Yoshiahu was not born. It must be, it means people will be born in the future. El Mash Mahachi, Mash Mahachi. Whereas it concedes, really. Noldim could mean people that are already born. It could mean people that will be born in the future. However, by Nadarim, we'll see this concept many times, you go by colloquial language, what people normally say. So therefore, when people say Noldim, generally people Noldim, as opposed to Yeludim, means people that are born Noldim, generally means Haroes HaNola, what's going to happen in the future. So, in terms of in terms of the way people talk, they normally sit, mean by noldim people that are going to be born, not people that are currently born. Even though the psukim can go either way, we are machria. We decide it based on what people, the way people speak. The chamim say, no. If you if you take a nether from noldim, everyone is included. Not just people that are not born yet, but also people that are born. So lafuke So what did he what did he come to exclude? Right, he ushered everything. What did he come to exclude? The fuke dog him over to exclude fish and chicken. He can still eat his fish and he can still eat his chicken because fish and chicken, uh, they're not born in the normal way, right? They're normally born, right? Human beings, the child is born uh, a live thing. Fish lay eggs, birds lay eggs. If you ever had birds that are making a nest near your window or something, you'll see that they have eggs over there. So they're not, not the, the birth of fish and and Birds is not normal. It's not normal way that human beings procreate. Human beings uh, have give birth. Human beings give birth to a live thing, as opposed to fish and chicken, which lay eggs, which eventually hatch. So therefore, those things were not included as ned there. Hope you enjoyed today's year. Stay tuned for Ian Ben Sion, where we talk about maybe some of the most. This is probably the most halakha and ma'isa gemara you'll ever see. Um, when I say ma'isa, things that are not just halacha lemaisa, but the most controversial topics in the Jewish world today. The Gemara talks about it today and lays down the foundation for what I'm about to say. You're not going to want to miss it. You know what's been coming up next.